Uh, joining us now to discuss is Alex Little, a criminal defense and litigation attorney, as well as a former assistant U.S. attorney, and as well as our panel here. But Alex, I'm going to start with you. First of all, how hard sure, is it? Mean. How hard is it to prove number one um, for them to say that this was a political stunt? This alleged affair took place back in 2006. The money allegedly exchanged hands between Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels to cover up the truth, which would be the equivalent of an NDA, you could say, um, yeah. in 2016 which obviously happened before the election, in the midst of this election. But the, the question is, how do you prove that it was to hide information before an election? That must be hard to prove. You know, it can be. This has been done before. There was a, a case against John Edwards in federal court with, that had very similar facts yep. about hiding an alleged affair. And you do it by showing that the information, if it came out, would have been detrimental to the campaign, that people within the campaign thought so. I think certainly when this news leaked, the way the former president reacted, denying this information, suggests that they would have thought at the time that it would have been detrimental. So I don't think that's as big a hurdle as some of the legal theories they're going to have to get over to get a conviction. I also think it sounds a bit speculative that the president president knows that he's being arrested because typically you don't tell right. somebody they're about to get arrested or indicted no. for something before it happens, no? No, that, that basically doesn't happen as, as a rule. You don't tell a target they're going to be indicted. You may tell their lawyers, listen, this is coming. We want your guy to turn himself in. If that's happened, you know, that may be the information, but there's no suggestion from his lawyers that they believe that information is, is necessarily correct. It may happen next week. It may happen two weeks from now. It may never happen. All right, I'm going to turn to my panel right now. I want to go with you, Tommy, because uh, a lot of people are basically just saying that this is a political witch hunt. Uh, the president obviously is saying so, and many others have said so as well. Let's put up the headlines. Uh, Wall Street Journal op-ed, Trump's legal peril in Manhattan. Uh, New York, the sun indicting Trump would be targeted injustice. The Washington Times writing, weaponization of the legal system reaches a whole new level. So, I mean, yeah, you could say this is a political witch hunt, but also there are those that are saying that there's federal money possibly that's being spent on this right. investigation, which obviously leaves me scratching my head. Yeah, and Speaker McCarthy did speak to that. So yes. that's, that remains to be seen. I really do count on our House Republicans to make sure that that's not the case. But just going back to the motivation behind all of this, listening to all of it, it sounds like they have a flimsy case at best, certainly not to the level of handcuffing a former president and the leading uh, contender for 2024. So what this feels like to me is what they've done to this man over and over and over again. It's not necessarily the legal ramifications themselves and the merit legally, it's more the perception. There are still Americans out there that watch other networks that think that Trump is a Russian agent. And so when you, when you levy these accusations, they stick. Whether it ends up coming to fruition or not, it sticks. But what this is also going to do, it's going to fire up the mega crowd. Maybe those people that were possibly leaning more towards a Ron DeSantis, now they go, here we go again, another witch hunt against our guy. I'm standing firm with Donald Trump. And I also think that this is a motivation. Yep. of the left. I think that yep. they would rather have Trump supporters galvanize behind Trump because I think that they know that Trump is easier to beat than Ron DeSantis. Ben, you were mentioning earlier before we started the show that you had Chris Christie on your show mm -hmm. and he had nothing good to say about Ron DeSantis. He didn't. He's, and also, he's also not a fan of Trump. So, I, I mean, the, and the, the majority are in Trump's corner when it comes to polls. Christie is a former federal prosecutor. Yes, so I was is. asking him about the facts of this case right. and he said, I have no idea what's going to happen, but... If this were heading toward an indictment, this is exactly how the facts would be playing out up to this point. So it seems like everyone, including the former president, is expecting an indictment and an arrest. I do have a question for Alex here on the legal side of things. Sure. Alex, I was reading this piece. This is in the New York Times, how the Times actually reported this out. They said, quote, the case against the former president hinges on an untested and therefore risky legal theory involving a complex interplay of laws, all amounting to a low-level felony. What do you make of that? Does that sound right to you? Yeah, I think that's a correct read of what's happening. The, the, the sad fact of the matter is prosecutors do that across the country every day with people much less important than the former president. Prosecutors are not known for their discretion. They're not known for taking it easy on people. And so here they've got a theory they think is viable and they're going to pursue it. But it, I think it's important to remember uh, here President Trump isn't really a victim. I mean, if the facts as alleged pan out, I mean, that's something you shouldn't be doing as a presidential candidate. You shouldn't have been doing it as a president. Whether or not it's illegal is what's going to be tested. And they're going to have to figure out whether the courts will let them do it. And you know, Julie, I would just point out, he said, 
DAs and prosecutors aren't known for going easy on people. No. One exception no. might be yeah. this guy, yes. who yeah. actually goes easy <laughs> on felons a lot of the time. Yes, that so is true. So that, that's a relevant piece to this as well. No, I am actually so glad that you brought that yeah. up because, you know, never mind the criminals out on the streets that are actually killing people daily. I mean, the stories of crime in Democratic cities in this country are clearly to blame uh, district attorneys, you know, liberal district attorneys uh, who are letting it happen. Yeah. But, uh, Jimmy, Fox News poll comes out mm -hmm. with this 2024 Republican nominee preference among Republican primary voters. Mm -hmm. I don't know if these numbers might be scaring the left a little bit, but I don't know. Could this have something to do with this investigation? Donald Trump at 43 percent, Ron DeSantis 28 percent. So uh, that means that Trump is actually up. He is, and that's before he just got the greatest reelection slogan of all time, which is tanned, arrested, ready. <laughs> That's pretty good, you know, we'll play off the old one. Uh, listen, I, my, my heart right now, in all honesty, it breaks for the country because we're in a really dangerous place. We could potentially be 48 to 72 hours away from seeing a former president in handcuffs. That's never not, seen before. It's never happened in 246 year history of the yeah. country. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be divisive. It reads as a banana republic type of move to a lot of people on the right. Yeah. And what I'm concerned with is this act reads as so brazenly political by Alvin Bragg. It reads like an act act of political self-preservation because yeah. he is wildly unpopular. Crime is spiking here in New York and he has a storied history of taking something like a misdemeanor. OK, uh, excuse me, a felony and downgrading yeah. it to a misdemeanor. Right. In this case, he's taking a misdemeanor and upgrading it to a felony. You know, and if you live anywhere in New York, OK, you know, Trump has a better chance of going free if he threw somebody in front of a train somehow, which doesn't make sense. But that's the New York we're living in. New York yeah. right now looks like Gotham City before Batman comes, but he can't come because he's not vaccinated. Right. Okay, nobody in New York right now who's fearing for their life walking the streets is like, gee, if only we rang up an ex-president for paying off a stripper, okay? Their priorities well, are not well, the priorities well, of the regular people. Are you, are you going to defend that behavior? Uh, I mean, no. let's talk about that for a second. No, no, I mean, this is what I wanted to ask you, though, Alex. Al Alex, I'm not condoning, I can't condone the behavior, but what I can tell you is as a New Yorker, we're watching such a brazen disregard for the well-being of women who are getting stabbed and raped and thrown in front of trains that it feels like a misappropriation of justice. Now, how this plays out in the legal system as it pertains to Trump, I understand we can do two things at once. But the question I wanted to ask you is this. There's so much talk about potential charges for Trump down in Georgia. Is there any yeah. concern in Georgia, this being a more legally precarious case in terms of it hinging on an untested legal theory? We know prosecutors always want to win the first case. Is there concern in Georgia that if this case fails, it taints their motive in Georgia in the eyes of, you know, the court of public opinion? I don't think so. These cases are going to take a long time. I think there's a good chance this case can never go to trial mm -hmm. before the next presidential election. But the real issue around the different investigations, and there's three of them, the investigation in Georgia, then the federal investigation by the special counsel, is what that sort of says to each of those prosecutors about the behavior of the individual. Mm -hmm. You'll remember the Department of Justice did not charge this crime. In the Michael Cohen indictment, they said that the facts that are at issue here happened, and they decided not to charge it. Alvin Bragg has made a different decision. Mm -hmm. and part Part of that may have to do with the continued unlawful behavior of the president in other circumstances. When you're a prosecutor, you look at the entire body of work, so to speak. It's like evaluating teams getting into the NCAA tournament. What is this individual's entire body of work? Do they deserve prosecution? And so to pull out those other cases, I think it does lend some context to what's happening here. Okay. All right. Well, really great discussion. I wish we had more time, but right. uh, really good points on all. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.